Hello and welcome to Dr. Nora's Clinic. As some of you may know, I'm a non-surgical injectables trainer teaching cosmetic injectables to doctors, nurses and dentists all around Australia from Melbourne to Sydney to Brisbane. And in this series of videos, I'll be sharing with you some safe techniques for injecting anti-wrinkle and dermal fillers. All surgical procedures carry risks and complications, and this is no different to cosmetic injectables as well, where the complications can be as severe as blindness. So therefore, it is really important that you guys go to a fully accredited course to learn your cosmetic injectables training. A common question that I get asked in practice is, Doc, look, I just, I just want my 11s done. I just want my 11s done. The previous person just did the 11s here. And it's really important to tell your patient that you don't just treat one single area by itself. So what they mean by that is they just want the glabella treated. But why don't we just treat that area? Well, if we treat this area exclusively, which is your procerus, you'll still get the corrugators working and they'll still have to have that action. So you'll get this sort of funny look of the, the lateral sides of your eyebrows moving, but nothing in the middle moving. And it looks a bit odd. So you just have to educate your patient and say to them, well, this is actually the anatomy, this is the frown complex, and this is why we treat this in this manner. And people will really appreciate you taking the time to explain that anatomy to them as well. Similarly, with the forehead as well, I tend to always recommend treating the forehead and the frown together. Because if, for example, we get rid of just the forehead, you still are left with the frown. Or if, for example, we get rid of the frown, they're still quite expressive on their forehead. So I tend to treat both the forehead and the frown together, unless, for example, the patient doesn't have much forehead lines in the first place or they don't have much movement. But aesthetically, it just looks a lot nicer treating the two together. And they work well in combination as well. Now, I would usually include the crow's feet as part of the upper face package. However, this patient's crow's feet treatment they had previously is still working, as you can see. And so I'm gonna be focusing just on the forehead and the frown line. Give me a phrase, yeah, and raise your forehead and a smile for me. Beautiful. Those astute of you out there will notice that after disabling a lot of these muscles over time, you do get some compensatory effects of other muscles. For example, give us a big frown. You can actually see that when Ash is frowning, he's starting to use this muscle here. Now this muscle is called the nasalis, which is a thin muscle that surrounds the top of the nose. Now sometimes when you have um, had so much injections or so much anti-wrinkle treatment to the forehead and the frown, this muscle can actually become a lot more prominent. And so you'll notice that these people tend to have this nasalis, which is a lot more prominent. And that becomes a bit more apparent to the patient. And they may say to you, you know what, that wasn't there before. And the reason being is because they're not able to frown, so therefore they're using their accessory muscles to frown, such as this one, the nasalis, which is beautifully presented here. <laughs> you can actually treat that as well. I will be discussing this in another video of mine, but it is a simple add-on. However, I know some girls and they think it's cute, and to be honest, I think it's quite cute as well. So, Bunny lines, nasalis lines, whatever you fancy, know it is out there, know that you can treat it if you need to, but always bear in mind the moral of the story is that once you disable another muscle, another muscle will start to work in its place. So just being mindful of the anatomy of the face is super important when it comes to anti-wrinkle injections. On the left, you can see his before picture and on the right, his after. And as you can see, his frontalis muscle no longer has those strong dynamic lines that we saw before. Moving on to his frown, his before picture, he looked pretty angry. And on the right, he doesn't look so angry anymore. That's fantastic. 